many people believe that nuclear fusion is not going to happen anytime soon, but Microsoft, well, they disagree. In fact, they have signed a contract believing that there is a US company that will deliver them nuclear fusion-based energy within only a few years. Is this true? Well, if it is, it's actually the true holy grail of renewable energy. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. What a time to be alive, right? This is the point in history where things are changing at an incredibly rapid pace. Now, for one, I've just read that a number of people believe artificial general intelligence will solve nuclear fusion within the next few years. Now, we haven't even hit artificial general intelligence yet, but they believe it's happening very, very soon. I'm not sure that's true. However, Microsoft believe, no matter what the case may be, nuclear fusion either has been solved or it is about to be. Microsoft had just signed an incredible agreement to purchase electricity from a nuclear fusion generator. I kid you not, I'm not making this up. It's actually true. Nuclear fusion is called the holy grail of energy. Why? Well, it's a potentially limitless source of clean energy that scientists have been chasing for the better part of a century. A company called Helion Energy thinks it can deliver the holy grail to Microsoft by 2028, as in they'll have it all working in 2027. This company called Helion Energy has announced a power purchased agreement with Microsoft that sees it plug in the world's first commercial fusion generator to a power grid in Washington. Now to say that's a tall order would be the understatement of the year. Robert Rosner said this, I would say it's the most audacious thing I've ever heard. Now, Robert Rosner is from the University of Chicago, and he is a the theoretical physicist. He doesn't believe these claims are true. In these kinds of issues, I will never say never, but it would be astonishing if they succeed. Experts' optimistic estimates for when the world might see its first nuclear fusion power plant have ranged from the end of the decade to several decades from now. Now, I believe it will happen within... 10 years. Helion's success depends on achieving remarkable breakthroughs in an incredibly short space of time and then commercializing its technology to make it cost competitive with other energy sources. Nevertheless, Helion and Microsoft are unfazed and it appears Microsoft legitimately believe that these guys had the technology or at least they're very close to doing so, to make it actually work. This is a binding agreement that has financial penalties if we can't build a fusion system, Helion founder and CEO David Curley tells The Verge. We're committed to be able to build a system and sell it commercially to Microsoft. So this company has to pay Microsoft money if they don't deliver. And it's quite a lot of money too. How might a fusion system work? Well, simply put, nuclear fusion mimics the way stars create their own light and heat. In our sun, hydrogen nuclei fuse together, creating helium and generating a tremendous amount of energy. Scientists have been trying to replicate this process in a controlled way since the 1950s. They've been able to replicate it in an uncontrollable manner AKA a hydrogen bomb. Now this is the opposite of nuclear power plants we have today that release energy through fission or splitting atoms apart. A major downside of fission is that it leaves behind unstable nuclei that can stay radioactive for millions of years. See Chernobyl. Fusion avoids the radioactive waste problem because it's essentially just creating new helium atoms. The radioactive waste problem is a pretty significant issue. I mean, it can devastate entire cities, Chernobyl and obviously Fukushima in Japan. The most advanced attempts at generating electricity through nuclear fusion involve shooting powerful laser beams at a tiny target or relying on magnetic fields to confine superheated matter called plasma with a machine called a tokamak. Helion uses neither of those methods. The company is developing a 40-foot device called a plasma accelerator that heats fuel to 100 million degrees Celsius. Yep, you heard that right, 100 million degrees Celsius. Now to give you an idea on just how hot that is, the outside surface temperature of the sun is 6,000 degrees Celsius. So that means that their tool will be 16,666 times hotter than the surface of the sun. It's kind of hard for the mind to imagine. So 100 million degrees Celsius, they say, is the key to nuclear fusion. Their tool will heat 
deuterium, which is an isotope of hydrogen, add helium-3 into a plasma, and then use pulsed magnetic fields to compress the plasma into fusion, and then use pulsed magnetic fields to compress the plasma until fusion happens. The company has a YouTube video that illustrates the process in detail. I'll put a link to the, in the description below to that video. Helios claims that the machine should eventually be able to recapture the electricity used to trigger the reaction, which can be used to recharge the device's magnets. We electrically recover all the energy we put into fusion so that we can actually build systems that are smaller and cheaper, and we can iterate on them a lot quicker. The company says this is an exciting announcement many in the community will be keen to see the technical details mit school of engineering distinguished professor anna white says in an email to the verge forthcoming publications and results will help clarify the approach and understand the timeline the part that my mind is struggling to understand though is being so much hotter than the sun 100 million degrees celsius figuring out how to be energy efficient is crucial to make fusion power a reality after all, you need extreme heat and pressure to force atoms to fuse together. And until recently, researchers hadn't been able to do this without burning through more energy than the fusion reaction actually produced. In December, lasers achieved a huge breakthrough called fusion ignition, meaning that for the first time, researchers were able to trigger a fusion reaction that resulted in a net energy gain. That's a major milestone that Helium has yet to accomplish. I'll put a link in the description below to that technology. I made a video about that. Getting enough helium-3 fuel could be another challenge. Rosner says, without a way of producing commercial quantities of the fuel, it's a very rare isotope that's used in quantum computing and medical imaging. It's expensive and it's rare. Helium, however, says it has patented a process to make helium-3 itself by fusing deuterium atoms together in its plasma accelerator. Part of the appeal of nuclear fusion in the first place is that it can run on hydrogen, the simplest and most abundant element in the universe. Assuming helium can pull this all off, it still has to ensure that it can do it in an actual affordable way. That's the key here. The cost of the electricity it generates for consumers would need to be comparable to or cheaper than today's power plants, solar and wind farms. In fact, it needs to be cheaper than today's solar, wind and battery storage because the prices of those technologies will continue to decline over the next decades. The company isn't actually sharing what price it has agreed to with Microsoft in its power purchase agreement. But the company's CEO says the goal is to one day get costs down to a cent per kilowatt hour, which would be about half the cost of solar energy. Helion's funders include OpenAI CEO Sam Altman. Microsoft has made a multi-billion dollar investment in OpenAI to boost its development of popular tools like ChatGPT. And Altman is Helion's board chair and largest investor. The Washington Post reports that he may have been involved in brokering Helion's power purchase agreement with Microsoft. Now, Curley says his company has been working closely with Microsoft's data center for the past few years to better understand the energy needs and get Microsoft comfortable with its technology. Basically, explaining to Microsoft how it will work and how it will actually work by 2028. Helion's announcement supports our own long-term clean energy goals and will advance the market to establish new efficient methods for bringing more clean energy to the grid faster, said Brad Smith, the vice chain and president at Microsoft, as has been the case with dreams of nuclear fusion for decades. We'll have to wait and see. Personally, I'm skeptical. I don't believe that having to cause these extreme temperatures of 100 million degrees Celsius and in the process needing to use expensive fuels to actually make it work is the best way to nuclear fusion. I actually believe it's more likely that artificial general intelligence will become a thing and that will be the key to solving it cost effectively. However, by the time that happens, the cost of wind, solar and battery storage could be so low that fusion technology becomes virtually irrelevant. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching.